Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and the Lord Jesus Christ, risen and present with us every moment of every day through the gift of the Holy Spirit. Today is June 14th, 2020, the second Sunday after Pentecost, also known as the second Sunday in ordinary time in year A. You may recall that last Sunday I was supposed to explain the Trinity. Can anyone explain to me what they learned from me about the Trinity last weekend? Crickets. <laughs> Very hard to explain. Yep, you are right. I didn't define the Trinity, but what I did draw out of the text is that the bulk of the passage isn't about God. It's about us. It's about what we will do in the name of God. It's about what we'll do because we belong to Jesus. When we focus on God, we always understand ourselves better. That's how this works. Today, we read in Matthew how Jesus commissioned the 12. Jesus didn't bring the 12 together because they were alike or because they were like-minded people. Indeed, they were not. Do you think they could have reached so many if all his disciples had been like one another? I can't answer that for you. You need to think on that. I leave it to you to seek your answer to that question. What I will share with you is that my background as an educator in public school education has informed me that it takes many different kinds of people to teach many different kinds of people. Jesus brought the 12 together. Today, Jesus brings us together. Are we all alike? Certainly we all are here together because we are all like-minded in that we believe in Christ Jesus our redeemer, sustainer, and pioneer of peace with justice. We are not all alike, certainly not. Jesus didn't bring us together because we were all alike. Jesus brings us together regardless of what we're like so that we can buoy one another up, love one another, be good neighbors to one another, and in that Jesus asks us to be disciples. Yes, members, but more importantly, disciples. Discipling for Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. So go out and find people who are undecided and lost, the unchurched, and invite them into the family of believers and invite them over and over again. And continue to the support the people who are already with you. Don't go to people who have completely different ideologies. Shake the dust from your sandals and move on. That's scriptural. You'll hear it today in the Gospel of Matthew. If you are to make a difference in the life of someone who has completely different ideology than you do, that's power for the course. And that will likely happen again and again if you are doing those first two things seeking the lost, the undecided, the unchurched, and supporting the people who are discipling with you, alongside you. As it is written in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So come join us. We are so happy to have you here worshiping with us today. 
There will be a few important announcements after worship today, so if you're interested, be sure to stay on after the titles scroll. Thomas, will you join me for the birthdays and anniversaries? Yes, of course. All right. Birthdays for June uh, uh, until next Sunday. So from today through to Saturday, next week. Rosie Vogie, June 8th. June 10th. Mike Porter. Shirley Peterson, June 12th. Ginger Thrasher, June 13th. And today, Ashley Klimek, uh, June 14th. An anniversary is coming up. We have two anniversaries today. We have Jerry and Janice Denny, happy anniversary. As well as Wayne and Lisa Perkins, happy anniversary. All right, let's sing a birthday tune. Are you guys ready? All right, all you birthday people. <laughs> Here we go. Happy, happy, happy birthday from all of us to you. We wish it was our birthday so we could party too. Hey! All right, very good. Okay, thank you, Thomas. Okay, so just a quick note here that this week I sent out an e-newsletter introducing Pastor Kevin Gregory, who will be starting with Joyful Spirit United Methodist Church in July. So please be sure to take some time to read his introduction and learn his background. I will be here with you intermittently through June, helping the office staff to set up new computers and learn new software. But this is my last Sunday of worship with you as pastor of Joyful Spirit United Methodist Church. Uh, our website will have more updates, so be sure to check out our website as well, www.joyfulspiritumc.org. Also, if you did not receive a directory at the outdoor drive-in worship service, you will receive your directory in the regular USPS mail. All right, please join us for the call to worship. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slaves or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. For the family and friends of George Floyd, Lord, in your mercy. For the police officers involved in the killing of George Floyd and for their families, Lord, in your mercy. Prayers for Alice's family. Alice Leona Porter's aunt passed away. Lord, in your mercy. All those in service of peace with justice, those in protest and those serving to protect that the Holy Spirit be beside, before, behind, above, and within their ranks. Lord, in your mercy. For healthcare workers, care providers, and families that they are safe as they serve our communities and their families during these uncertain times. Lord, in your mercy. For the most vulnerable among us, especially those in nursing homes, those struggling with addiction, and all those with mental health concerns. Lord, in your mercy. For all 2020 graduates and all school and staff and administration, Lord, in your mercy. For Joyful Spirit United Methodist Church and its leadership, Lord, in your mercy. For Eric, Sandy, and Barry Pratt's son-in-law, Lord, in your mercy. For Don and Martha Simmons, Lord, in your mercy. For Glenn, Donna Mayo Faring's husband, Lord, in your mercy. For Joyce Vogie, continued healing, Lord, in your mercy. For Hannah, Leona Porter's granddaughter, Lord, in your mercy. For Dan, Bonnie Bartos's brother, Lord, in your mercy. 
For Laura Faust, continued healing, Lord, in your mercy. For Barry Pratt, continued healing, Lord, in your mercy. For Larry and Marlene Calhoun, continued healing, Lord, in your mercy. For Arliss's sister, Margaret Anderson, continued healing, and Kathy Rood, Lord, in your mercy. All right, joys. We have been blessed by being able to celebrate and worship in a drive-in outdoor service on Highway 29, just outside of Wadena, as we did last weekend. That's also posted to our YouTube channel if you didn't get a chance to catch it. And so that is one of my joys I would like to share today. It's a joy that we can use the technology that we have to connect to our friends and family and to have some of us pets keep us to have friends. All right, so joys for technology and joys for pets. All right. I really enjoy all of the rain and storms that we get. Um, I'm really grateful to be inside and reading a book or something, enjoying the, the weather. And for those fields to get lots of rain. Very good. Even though we have, sometimes it seems like so many crazy things going on. I really am grateful and joyful that we have it so good. I love our life together, our little family, and the work that we have and our health. I'm grateful. Very blessed. Thank you for sharing, Thomas. I'm going to take just a moment. Like Lydia has another one. Oh, yes, Lydia. Yeah, I'd also just like to... Um, point out that I'm really, really, really joyful and grateful for everyone in the uh, Black Lives Matter movement today and making a real change in our country and making it just a better place for everyone overall. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Lydia. So I'd like to give you a little time to think about your joys and concerns today. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. I would like to conclude our joys and concerns today with a prayer from Bishop O given for us during this season of pandemic postponement and civil unrest. Portions of this prayer are adapted from a prayer written by Rabbi Spilker of Mount Zion Temple in Minneapolis. Prayer is so important. Please bow your heads and in an attitude of prayer, let us pray. Help us breathe deeply for a moment to close our eyes, to shut out the video screens and the sounds that have inundated us with news and become our surrogate community. Help us to breathe deeply for a moment, to calm our busy minds and anxious hearts that prevent us from listening to you and to our neighbors and to those with whom we disagree. Help us to close down all inner and outer noise so we can nourish our souls. We need your blessing of perspective and patience. May we be tough enough to face these challenges with perseverance. May we be compassionate enough to care for all people, creatures, and our planet. May we be trusting enough to endure painful loss of life and physical separation without dismantling our values of justice and democracy. May we be faithful enough to follow you to places we have never traveled before. May you, Holy One of Blessing, lovingly embrace us with creative resolve to do what is needed for ourselves, for our loved ones, for our communities, for our church and our interconnected world. In, In the, the powerful, powerful name, name of, of the Christ risen Christ, Christ we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. Our gospel reading today is from the book of Matthew, chapters 9, verses 35 through 38, and chapter 10, verses 1 through 23. And Elliot will be reading the gospel for us today. 
Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits, to cast them out, and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy, and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them. For they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who will speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord. Amen. Amen. I think that there are three deliberate places I could have started with this message today, or that I could start with this message today. And I chose the least likely, the one pointed out to me after reading Reverend Weber's writings on discipleship ministries.org. It's not the message commonly given from the text. Usually preachers take on the verse, um, the piece of verse 36 in chapter 9 that talks about the harassed and helpless and they stay focused there. 36 reads, when we saw the crowds, he had compassion, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd, the harassed and helpless. And spending time there in that verse is certainly an admirable place to spend time. And there is another famous phrase in this text, one that seems like a starting place. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. That's verse 37 in chapter 9 of Matthew. As you heard Eliot read, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. This is another truth we can't help but latch on to. This idea, this statement has launched, launched all sorts of mission and ministry in the church, and rightly so. It is the reality that faces the church 
all the time. There's too much to do and not enough doers. There's too much need in the world around us and not enough resources to meet those needs. But that's not going to be my focus today. Instead, although I am going to focus on verse 36, I'm going to not focus on, excuse the double negative, harassed and helpless. I'm going to focus on the part of 36 that says, when he saw the crowds. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. He saw the crowds. That's going to be our starting point because that is our starting point, folks. It is his, Jesus's starting point. Therefore, it should be ours. Our starting point as preachers and our starting point as a congregation, wanting to engage the community around us, wanting to live as Pentecost people. He saw the crowd, which means he was within seeing distance. He wasn't removed. He wasn't behind walls or doors. It means that he was approachable and acceptable. He was where the people were. We know he was engaged because the next phrase in the verse, not only did he see the crowd, but in seeing it, he had compassion. His compassion wasn't disembodied, caring in the abstract, seeing problems, needing solutions. No, he had compassion. As Reverend, Re Reverend Weber says, he had compassion because he saw the people all around him, all the people. What does it mean to see the people? To really see them, not to prejudge or categorize, but to simply see. To see them as people worthy of compassion and care. What does that mean? We might see that the people around us are indeed harassed and helpless, suffering from the lack of a savior, but we won't know that is what we will see until we look. Oh sure, we can assume, but what do we see? Perhaps it would be helpful to stand in the place of the other for a moment. To consider what it means, what it feels like to be seen, as opposed to the times when we felt overlooked or ignored or pigeonholed. I give you this verse from Pastor Martin Niemöller, circa 1940s, World War II. First they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionists. Then they came out for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me and there was no one left to speak out for me. To know that someone has seen the real self hidden underneath and still manages to love and accept us is a profound, powerful feeling. It makes a difference in our lives to feel that in our hearts. It makes a difference in our self-image to feel that kind of love, that kind of agape love. Can we do less when we seek to engage the community around us? Because he sees and has compassion. Because Jesus knows that it is God's will that all be gathered into the loving arms of grace, Jesus calls the twelve as we hear in the Gospel of Matthew today. Something significant is going on. According to Matthew, anyway, Jesus calls the twelve in order for them to be those laborers that are so few. The community isn't called together for their own sake. The twelve aren't called in order to tend to their own souls, 
to make sure they are right with God? No, they are called out to be the church that sees the crowds. We don't come to our neighbors because we want to fix them or threaten them or chastise them. We come to see them. We don't rely on our theology, on our preferences for worship and our language for prayer. We come truly empty handed so that we can see our neighbor without the filters. Is this easy? (laughs) No, it is just a matter of saying that's what I'm going to do. It is just flipping a switch to turn off our prejudice. So of course it is not easy, but try and try again to see those who surround us. Maybe we'll see them as harassed and helpless, but harassed by whom and helpless in front of what? And maybe we'll see them as resources of strength and grace that cause us to be amazed and to give the God they may not know thanks for the blessing of seeing them. What is most likely is that if we look long enough, we will see ourselves in them. We are like them and they are like us in the ways that really matter. And that too, can be an occasion of praise. The Holy Spirit is unifying. It brought voices of all the languages together in unity as we read in Acts. And anything that divides is not of God, not of the Holy Spirit that is here among us, before us, behind us, above us, and beside us. So with the confidence we have as children of God, pray with me the prayer that Christ Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please join us in the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. As we tithe today, We are reminded of the importance of giving back a portion of what God has so generously provided. Please pray with me. Gracious God of light and hope, we bring our offering to your altar this morning, celebrating your triumph over the grave. Scripture reminds us that we have been given the pathway for a new birth, the promise of a heavenly inheritance, and the power of God's protection. We offer ourselves to make this good news known to those who have not yet heard the good news. With praise and thanksgiving, we dedicate these gifts. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please join us for the benediction, and Lydia, you could take us out with a little tune. So come on up, everybody. I'll make room for everybody. (laughs) Thomas. May the God of Isaac, that is laughter. The Christ who for the joy set before him endured the cross. And the spirit spirit of of joy be with you now and and forever. forever. Amen. 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 Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
As you heard Pastor Amy say, this is her last service as pastor of Joyful Spirit United Methodist Church. She was accepted to the Master of Divinity program at Luther Seminary in St. Paul, where she begins this fall. And we are so proud of her as she has received the Jubilee Scholarship, which covers the full cost of tuition. Pastor Amy will be serving three-quarter time in the churches of Rosendale and Atwater, starting Sunday, June 28th. We want to thank our friends and family, our church families, communities of faith, Pastor Callie Christensen, and Joyful Spirit United Methodist Church for their continued support and encouragement as Pastor Amy and our family begin this new chapter in our faith journey. Please know that we are in deep gratitude to you, all of you, for all you have done to lift up Pastor Amy and our family during these seasons of change, and we are so grateful for your continued prayers and love. Thank you, Thomas. And on that note, I want to reassure you that this YouTube channel will continue to host worship services. I want to introduce you to Pastor Kevin Gregory, who will be joining Joyful Spirit United Methodist Church as their new pastor the first Sunday in July. Pastor Gregory will be serving the churches of Joyful Spirit United Methodist Church and Frazee United Methodist Church. A few things about Pastor Gregory. Okay. He is a native Texan and he grew up in Mineral Wells, Texas. We love Texas. We, we spent some yeah, time in Texas. We spent some time in Texas. Uh, Mineral Wells is about 40 miles west of Fort Worth, if you're trying to get a geographical idea of where that is. And um, he has been and is a lifelong United Methodist. He grew up active at his home church, uh, FUMC Mineral Wells, where his mother served as the part-time children's director. Over the years, through involvement in that congregation and in serving in a variety of ways at the annual conference level, he received a calling into ordained ministry. After graduating high school, he attended Southwestern University, which is a small Methodist liberal arts college in Georgetown, Texas. And during college, he served in the student ministries area at FUMC Georgetown and was elected to serve his annual conference as part of the delegation to the 2016 and 2019 General Conference. All of those experiences, he says, have helped shape how he thinks about the church. And this has helped and has led him to pursue his MDiv at the University of Chicago with the initial hope of pursuing doctoral work. However, his track has changed just slightly and he will be joining you at Joyful Spirit United Methodist Church. Well, he still wishes that he, um, well, he still may pursue his doctoral work. Uh, God is active in his life and he is continuing to learn more about what it means, what God's call is for him, um, what being a Methodist is all about. And here he is moving to Minnesota. Quick question, what's MDiv? Masters of, of Divinity, which is the same seminary program that I will be starting at Luther Seminary in St. Paul this coming fall. I should have known that. You maybe should have known, but it's okay, right? <laughs> All right, so he will be joining you very soon, and uh, we just want to give him a warm, warm welcome and just let him know that Joyful Spirit United Methodist Church is looking forward to seeing him soon. So God bless you as you bless others with your prayers and connectionalism. And I just wanted to say we should all be grateful for the people who are willing to do this work. Thanks, Thomas. I agree. Let's say a little prayer for them. Almighty God, thank you for bringing Pastor Gregory with us. Thank you for all the paths. Thank you for the calls that you help us discern from you. Lead us in the way that you will for your will, God, not for our will, but for your will. We lift these prayers up to you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.